Since APS started publishing in 1911, starting with Phytopathology as the lone journal, it has expanded the publication platforms to cover many areas of plant disease research. So essentially you have a journal for every type of research that you conduct on plant pathogens as well as the diseases they cause. Along with it, uh, all these journals are backed by very professional and established uh, editorial boards that basically provide very professional feedback to the authors. So that's why you have the greatest platform for the dissemination of the research that you uh, perform and publish. And that's why APS journals are perhaps the best source of your publications. With regard to phytopathology, I think um, you know, a very attractive feature of that journal is the excellent name recognition that the journal has and also the high impact. So I would recommend it for, as the journal of choice for anyone doing fundamental research in plant pathology or holistic research, uh, looking for a uh, constructive uh, but also rigorous peer review process that ultimately improves the manuscript and the quality of the science that's published. We are really looking forward to the 2021 focus issue in phytopathology uh, that's focused on population genomics and phylogenomics approaches in plant pathology. I think uh, plant disease is, uh, has its own face relative to other journals, so it's a much broader area that is covered by the journal. So we handle uh, everything that uh, relates to pathogens inducing diseases in plants from all facets of plant pathology and from all facets of plant disease. The international contribution of the journal is also important. It means that the reputation that we have is good enough to stand in the entire world, so everybody is trying to publish it and everybody is trying to read it. The policy that we have in plant disease is that we will make everything possible to help a person to publish in this journal. So we are not uh, seeking how to reject the paper, we are seeking how to help people to publish in the journal. And that's really where we want to position MPMI, is to be a place where the community discusses these big questions. Not just what we've done, but looking forward. What are, what are the big questions that face us? I mean, the whole point of science is to try to answer unanswered questions. So how do we, what are they? How do, where, where are we going? We've already made resource announcements open access, and that's, I think that's important because that's the whole point is they should be a resource for the community. We've also made technical advances open access for the same reason. How can we be the place where people discuss these questions if people can't read our work? More and more um, um, studies in PHP are appearing on uh, fungicide resistance. So those kinds of uh, publications are very important for judicious application of fungicides and also for essentially eliminating the use of fungicides that are no longer effective. And I also would like to see, um, anticipate um, seeing more and more DNA and RNA seq based diagnostic assays for plant diseases and pathogens. If you have information on multidisciplinary research that is useful for plant health practitioners, regulatory bodies, or anybody that wants to control disease in the field, then Plant Health Progress is the venue for publication of those kinds of studies. I really enjoy encouraging people to publish in the Phytobiomes Journal. It has a very broad topic base, so it's looking at the whole plant and the communities associated or the biomes associated with those plants. So that could be the microbes, the insects, 
the environmental conditions, many aspects associated with it, and often in tritrophic or multi-trophic interactions as well. One of the things I'm excited about for Phytobiome's journal really is the fact that it, it, it seems to connect everything with, with everything else, and this idea of uh, a disease triangle, as, as we know it in plant pathology, for example, it's, it's a very uh, flat structure where we have a pathogen, a plant, and the environment that together somehow come to disease. And we have now, I think, a good understanding that uh, plant pathogens do not operate in a, in a, in a biological vacuum. They, they are trying to get food and, and resources that they have to share with other microorganisms on the same plant. And I think that really uh, adds a, a fourth dimension to the disease triangle. And I think that is really what, what excites me in the phytobiome research. Part of the reason this journal is, is an, an excellent place to, to publish in is the fact that we're open access. Open access means that you can have your article ready, people can anywhere around the world can access it um, instantly as soon as it's, it's first published, which is really great for an up and coming author who is trying to get their research seen. We also do some additional advertising for these articles that come in. We're trying to make sure that they're really seen on the, the Twitter base um, and there's often some news stories that are done on selected articles trying to really heighten the experience exposure for an author. The name of the news journal is called Fight of Frontiers and APS leadership is nimble enough not only to respond to market forces but also as a trendsetter. Historically they have demonstrated these qualities and the latest one, uh, the reason that they started it is because some of the institutions and funding agencies demand that the publications that, uh, that come out of the research that they fund are only published in gold open access journals. So to cater to the needs of those authors, APS decided to start Fight of Frontiers. There are a couple of distinguishing features. One is that it's open access. The other one is that, uh, and, and this is very important because our, uh, most of our other journals are not open access and some colleagues around the world are required to publish in open access journals. Um, another distinguishing feature is that this journal thrives uh, to publish all research that is rigorous regardless of, of perceived impact. And then also, importantly, it publishes a lot of papers that are out of scope in the other journals, so it provides a new venue for our APS members to publish in. The type of papers that might not fit into the scope of the other journals include those that might be at the interface of food safety with plant pathology, and those that are plant stress-related abiotic stress disorders that aren't typically published in any of our other journals. And also um, those that, uh, that cover aspects of uh, sociological uh, plant pathology, uh, economic aspects of uh, plant pathology. So one type of article I think that would fit really well into Fight of Frontiers are virus papers that focus primarily on the description of sequences of new viruses and their comparison with existing viruses, but don't necessarily look at any biological aspects such as virus transmission or translocation. Another one might be uh, QTL mapping studies that look at host resistance genes and map those, but without necessarily looking at how the host resistance impacts disease epidemiology or host pathogen interactions, for example. I think for me the most exciting part of this journal is that we can publish negative results or results that are perceived as having no impact. Because I think there is a real bias in, in, in modern science where only results that have uh, significant differences can be published. And that completely biases the, the publication record. So I think this is, this is a major, very important step for our society. 